Good morning, my name is Fisher Bolton and I am in the first grade at Wilmington School of the Arts. The announcements this morning are Eden Village. Join us in our final week of raising 40K in 40 days to sponsor a home in Eden Village. You can donate online or mail a check to the church. Leeton and Easter offerings. Make your own cross as we prepare to celebrate Easter this year. We invite you to create your own version of the cross and send us a picture of it. Be creative. Once you have completed your cross, please take a close-up picture of it and send it to julia at rightsfulumc.org. Pictures are due on Saturday, March 27th. <coughs> Monday, Thursday. We will be offering an online service for Monday, Thursday, led by our confirmation class. Check our YouTube channel starting at 6 a.m. Thursday morning. Journey to the Cross. Our Good Friday offering is a virtual meditation called Journey to the Cross. This one hour experience is best viewed on a sitting on a large screen. We hope that this meditation gives you new insight and peace as you reflect on Christ journey to the cross. Easter Sunday. We will be, first we will have our community sunrise service on Easter Sunday at 6.30 a.m. at the end of Oxford Street. Next, we will have our outdoor worship service at 9 a.m. at Rightful Beach Park. We will have our traditional crosses to be flowered as well. Lastly, we will have worship on the water at 4 p.m. at South Channel Park. Last but not least, we hope we will, you will join us at the church from 10, 15 to, to 11, 30 for Palm Sunday Palooza. Come meet Sterling and Sherlock, two adorable donkeys, and have your picture taken with them. Plus, we will be having the Kona ice truck, my favorite part, crafts, and so much more. We hope to see you there. We hope you enjoy your service today. Thank you, and God bless.
Pearson, and I am in the third grade at Ogden Elementary. Please bow your heads and join me in the opening prayer. Dear God, this church is my family. Help us learn together. Help, help us wor worship together. Help us share together. Help us play together. Help us pray together. And help us come together and reach out to everyone with love. Amen. Good morning. I am Jenny Crichton. I am a first grader at New Horizons Elementary School. We invite you this morning to pause the worship video and text or call three people and pass the peace of Christ. Thank you for worshiping with us on Children's Sabbath Day and Palm Sunday. Enjoy the service. of faith. We believe in God who loves us and wants us to love each other. This is our God. We believe in Jesus who cared about children and held them in his arms. He wanted a world where everyone could live together in peace. This is Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy, Holy Spirit who keeps working with us until everything is good and true. This is the Holy Spirit. We can, we can be the church which reminds people of God because we love each other. This, this we, we believe. believe. Amen. Bye. I am Smith McNamara, and today I am reading the Psalm of the Month, Psalm 51, 1 through 12. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant, uh, abundant abundant mercy blot out my transgressions wash me through wa wash me through thoroughly from my iniquities iniquities and cleanse me from my sin for i know my transgressions and my sin is never before me against you you alone have i sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are just are justified in your sentence a blameless and blameless a, and blameless when you pass 
and uh, and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner, when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Before, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge, pure, purge me with my hyssop, he, 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 and I shall be clean. Be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. 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 Create, create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. And do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore, restore me to, uh, restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <laughs> beautiful sabbath day and for our beautiful church family thank you for giving us comfortable homes plenty of good food to eat and water to drink we pray that you help us to take good care of the earth that you have given us we also pray for the leaders of our community and world that they will make good decisions that honor and take care of your gifts to us we pray for those on our prayer list and for those we lift up now in our hearts 
These things we ask in the name of your Son, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Jesus coming and came running towards him. They had heard he might be coming and they wanted to see him because he had just helped a dead man come back to life. That was Lazarus, one of his best friends, right? Right. People knew that Jesus was special as Jesus and his disciples got closer to town more and more people watched Jesus. The crowd that surrounded him started to shout praises to him for all the miracles he had done. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna means save us. They thought that Jesus was going to save them from the people that ruled over them. And he was, just not in the way they thought. But not everyone was happy, right? True, some men named Pharisees heard in the crowd praising God. And they said to Jesus, Teacher, why don't you tell these people to stop praising you as if they, you were God? 
I love what he told them, Jesus replied. If they are quiet now, even the rocks will cry out. Just imagine, even the rocks knew that Jesus was God. And that is the story of Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Just imagine how the crowds looked. I can imagine Jesus riding it on a donkey. With everyone praising God. Good morning, I am Tess Perry and I'm in the fourth grade at Coastal Prep. Today I'm reading the scripture lesson from Mark 11, 1 through 11. When Jesus and his follower, followers approached Jerusalem, they came to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives. Jesus gave two disciples a task, saying to them, Go into the village over there. As soon as you enter, you will find tied up there a colt that no one has ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you doing this? Say it's, it, say it's masters need it, and, it will, and the, he will send it back right away. They went to find a colt tied up to the gate outside on the street, and they untied it. It and they untied it. Some people standing around said to them, What are you doing untying this colt? They told them just what Jesus had said and left them alone. They brought the colt to Jesus and threw their clothes upon it and sat on it. Many people spread out their clothes on the road while approaching while approachers while others spread branches cut from fields. Those in front of him and those following were shouting, Hosanna! Blessings, Lord, blessings of the Lord. Blessings on the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. After he looked around at everything, because it was already late in the evening, he returned to Bethany with the twelve. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, as Jesus made his way into Jerusalem, the crowds yelled, Hosanna, Lord save us. Father, I pray that we too will make room for Jesus to come into our heart so that we too would be saved. In Jesus' name, amen. So something interesting happened this week, just kind of out of the blue. My neighbor asked me if I would train for a triathlon with him. Uh, where were you 50 pounds ago? You know what I mean? Um, but I'm intrigued. And in fact, this might be the kind of fitness plan that will help me get into better shape. As you probably know, a triathlon involves three sports, swimming, cycling, and running. I've done distance running before, but never cycling or swimming. If I take this on, and I guess I have to now that I've told the whole world about it, I'll have to learn how to do these other athletic disciplines pretty well. Triathlons are becoming more and more popular, as you know, but they haven't always been. In the really not so distant past, sporting success was equated to the devotion of an athlete to one particular discipline. For an individual pursuit, such as running or cycling, devotion was translated into the athlete spending every training opportunity engaged in one aspect or another of that one sport in order to simulate competition. competition. Even in team sports, the athlete would play or practice at every available moment, and where there were no formal practices or games, the striving basketball player, soccer player, or softball player, what have you, would go find a pickup game in their sport in order to continue their quest for excellence. Well, this all started to change in North American sports in 1972, when the best Canadian hockey players lost a series of games against the best players from the former Soviet Union. They discovered that the Soviet players had been increasing their endurance, their speed, and their footwork through cycling and intense soccer games not just from playing hockey. Well, 50 years later, this doesn't sound too revolutionary. Nowadays, in order to build a better all-around athlete with increased fitness and less mental fatigue, people are more and more turning to cross-training. 
meaning they are training across sports or athletic disciplines as they prepare for a season, a game, or an event. There are now entire gyms based on the model of cross-training. Of course, I'm not a trainer for physical fitness. I'm a pastor that guides you in spiritual fitness. But I think we can use some of the same principles from the fitness world to help us grow spiritually. As always, we turn to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. What different disciplines did he employ as he prepared to go to the cross? There are many we could discuss, just as athletes tend to diversify as they improve their overall fitness. But for the sake of time, and with this being Children's Sabbath, I'd rather focus on doing a few things well before we move on to more complicated endeavors. Following Jesus' pattern of spiritual cross-training, the first thing we have to do is trust in God. No matter what, we have to trust in God. I have a friend who starts each confirmation class with a jar full of jelly beans. He asks his students to guess how many beans are in the jar, and then he writes down each kid's estimate. Then, next to those guesses, he makes another list of their favorite songs. And when the lists are complete, he reveals the actual number of beans in the jar. And the whole class wonders who's closest to being right. Then the pastor turns to the list of favorite songs and says, which one of these is closest to being right? Well, inevitably, the students all protest that there is no right answer because a person's favorite song is merely a matter of taste. The pastor then goes on and asks, when you decide what to believe in terms of your faith, is that more like guessing the number of beans or more like choosing your favorite song? He always gets the same answer. That choosing one's faith is more like choosing your favorite song. When I first heard this story, I asked, do you confirm them anyway? And he smiled and said, yeah, well, first I try to argue them out of it. We all do it, don't we? We all try to pick and choose our favorite parts of the Christian faith to adhere to and let other parts move to the background. Most of us make choices every day, not always conscious choices, but choices all the same to determine how closely we will follow God's will. Jesus didn't do that. He trusted in God always. So after we choose to trust in God, the next thing we have to do is pray to God. We see many examples of Jesus praying. He often goes to the mountains or countryside to get away from the crowds and pray. He teaches his disciples to pray the Lord's Prayer. And then when he's getting ready to leave them, we see him pray for his disciples. During Holy Week, we once again find Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane and even from the cross. Prayer is vital to the spiritual life. It is the main way we maintain our relationship with God. Your prayers don't have to be fancy, and they don't have to be long. They just have to be real, honest, genuine. The reason why this is so crucial is because we're constantly being influenced by other people and other things that don't have God's motives in mind. I'm not sure our children will remember this, but there are those who are a little older will remember an ad campaign for cell phones where a customer was constantly asking, can you hear me now? Only after he switched carriers did he get the clear service he was looking for. The same is true for us in prayer. We have to switch carriers from worldly influences to spiritual influences to understand God's will for our lives. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. So we've decided to trust in God and pray to God so that finally we can love like God. As the crowds gathered on the streets of Jerusalem on that Palm Sunday long, long ago, they rooted for Jesus and claimed that he was the Messiah. But they didn't yet understand what Jesus had come to do, that he had been preparing to go to the cross and die for their sins. It is one thing to love God. It is another altogether to love like God, to deny yourself and make a sacrifice so that someone else could have life and have it abundantly. That's real cross-training. Let me give you an example from the Bible. It's a story that I love but is rarely told. 
It's about a man with a funny name called Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth was playing a real life and death game of hide and seek because he was afraid that if anyone found him, he would be killed. You see, way back in the Old Testament, when David was made king over all of Israel, he inquired if there was anyone left of the previous king's family by saying in 2 Samuel 9, Is there still anyone left of the house of Saul, that was the previous king, that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? Jonathan was Saul's son, who was a friend of David. Normally, this question would be bad news for the former king's family because the new king customarily killed all the remaining relatives to remove the threat of any of his children or grandchildren from retaking the throne or stirring up trouble in the kingdom. But David didn't operate that way. Let's read a little further. King David's servant said, There is still a son of Jonathan. He is at the house of Machir, the son of Emil, at Lodabar. Let me stop you right there. In Hebrew, the term Lodabar literally means no word or no communication. It can also be defined as no pasture or literally no place. Okay, so the last living relative of Saul, his grandson Mephibosheth, is living way out in the desert in a place called no word or no place. Why? Because he's scared to death that the new king, David, is going to kill him. He has run away to hide, but a servant of King David's has found him. Let's keep going. And Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, son of Saul, came to David and fell on his face and paid homage. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he answered, probably shaking in his boots, Behold, I am your servant. And David said to him, Do not fear, for I will show you kindness for the sake of your father Jonathan, and I will restore to you all the land of Saul, your grandfather, and you shall eat at my table always. Mephibosheth paid homage and said, Say what? No, he didn't. He said, What is your servant that you should show regard for a dead dog such as I? Notice the humility of Mephibosheth. Now, what I haven't told you is that the Bible says that when Mephibosheth was just a child, his nurse accidentally dropped him so that he was crippled in both feet. In one of the kindest acts in all of Israel's history, King David turns to one of his own servants and makes him a servant of Mephibosheth with these instructions. All that belonged to Saul and to his house I've given to your master's grandson. And you and your sons and your servants shall till the land for him and shall bring in the produce that your master's grandson may have bread to eat. But Mephibosheth, your master's grandson, shall always eat at my table. So he returned Saul's land to Mephibosheth and even gave him servants to work the land so that he might live off the produce of that land. And even more, he was given a permanent seat at the king's table. So Mephibosheth moved from Lodabar back to Jerusalem, from no place to the palace. And the Bible said he ate at the king's table like one of the king's own sons. What a picture of someone who loved like God does. We are all helplessly crippled by sin. We must humble ourselves before our king as Mephibosheth did before David. Mephibosheth, Saul's grandson, who for years relentlessly pursued and tried to kill David, was provided for and placed at the king's table as David graciously said, He shall always eat at my table. Mephibosheth was treated like the king's son. He was accepted graciously at the king's table. He was able to be in the king's presence. And he was able to be provided with all that he needed for the rest of his life, even though he was helpless to do anything else. Mephibosheth couldn't even provide for his own living. What King David did for him is what it means to love like God. It's what we call grace. So as you go through this week, I invite you to do three things. Trust in God. Pray to God 
and love like God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pray with me. Holy and gracious God, so often we doubt and we end up going our own way. Help us to stay rooted so that we might trust in you always for all things. Help us to open up communication with you. I know you want to hear from us. Father, may we take the time this week to speak more clearly with you. And then teach us how to love like you. To be gracious as you always are. Lord, help us to be generous with the love that you have poured into us by sharing it with others. In Jesus' name, amen. Go forth in peace, trusting in God, praying to God, and loving like God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.